Ella, Chapter 14, Mojave Desert The distance from Needles, California to Barstow is 255 miles. Gabby and Ella got an early start, up before the sun. The trip through the Mojave Desert was uneventful, no monotonous. Miles and miles of sand, cactus, rabbits, and foxes. Gabby was excited by the towns with names like Goff, Essex, Amboy, which is 48 miles north of Joshua Tree National Forest. Of course, with Ella driving, Gabby had little hope of seeing any of it. When they arrived in Barstow, well, let's just say that Barstow isn't exactly a we-have-arrived kind of town. The sun was still up, so they pushed on west to Bakersfield. Again, Gabby saw signs of interest, like Edwards Air Force Base. Could she stop and take a picture in front of the sign? Ella was five miles down the road before her girlfriend could form the words. It had been years since Ella had seen a jack-in-the-box, much less eaten at one. She remembered the one from her childhood with happiness. The memory of how it used to be and the present reality left her feeling empty. It wasn't as cheery and festive as she had remembered. Ella ate a jumbo jack with cheese and Gabby chose an egg roll and curly fries. The two women stayed at the America's Best Inn down the street from the Jack in the Box. It was inexpensive and comfortable. They watched TV to learn about the new place they were in. Ella put ice on her 12-pack and Gabby medicated in the bathroom. That night, Gabby took off her money belt and stuffed it under her pillow. She didn't want anything to interfere with their love-making tonight. Life was good. The next morning, it was time to get going again. Tired, but in a good way, like when you worked muscles you didn't know you still had. The women prepared for another day of travel. Gabby suggested, Let's go to Los Angeles. There's a motel there, the Sea Rock Inn. It might be a good place to stay for a while. All right, agreed Ella. It was a two-hour drive, according to the AAA map. She was apprehensive about driving the I-5. She had driven from Florida to California, and she knew that she could do this, too. She had no intention of letting Gabby drive anymore. That was for sure. They drove. Up, up, up. 2,000 feet, 3,000 feet, 4,000 feet above sea level. Gabby's head was spinning. There were so many sights to be in awe of. Ella was just trying to keep it in the road. The speed limit was 70, and still cars were speeding past their little RAV4. The semis were the ones Ella was concerned about. Crawling up a hill past the semi was one thing. It was the sight of those behemoths in her rearview mirror that motivated Ella to keep her eyes on the road. They made it in record time, an hour and a half. The simple to follow directions to the area where they were to find sea, the Sea Rock Inn made them feel hopeful. When Gabby glimpsed a sign directing traffic to Compton, Compton, she began to have second thoughts. She kept it to herself though and continued to co-pilot the car toward the motel. Upon seeing the motel, the two were of one mind. Let's get out of here, was their unspoken reaction to the Sea Rock Inn. It was nothing like the pictures on their web page. Ella pulled the car into a parking lot of a jack-in-the-box on the corner. It was a depressed neighborhood with a bakery, coin laundry, and dollar store in the adjacent strip mall. The two went inside to eat and think about their next move. It was then that Gabby realized that she had l did not have her money belt. All their money was in Gabby's money belt, which she had left beneath her pillow at the hotel in Bakersfield. No need to discuss their next move. They had to go back to Bakersfield. Gabby quickly found the hotel receipt and called them. She explained who she was and what she had done, and she told the innkeeper that she would be returning soon. Well, asked Ella, what did, did they have it? She didn't say, replied Gabby. 
I guess I really didn't give her a chance. She had to ask the housekeeper. So, okay. Okay, honey. It's going to be all right. I've got some change in my pocket. Let's get some coffee at the McDonald's across the street, encouraged Ella. Gabby took a deep breath and remembered that the universe was in control and loves them. You're right. I'm not going to panic until absolutely necessary, Gabby reassured. That's my girl, smiled Ella. With that decided, they drove to the McDonald's and got some coffee and an Egg McMuffin for the drive back to Bakersfield. It was the first bulletproof Mickey D's they had ever seen. To be continued.